Welcome to How to Sci-Fi, and today we're going to be talking about makeup and costumes. Someone says you're important. Hi, my name is Paulina. I am the head of makeup and costumes for Season Deliver, and today I'm going to be commenting on our first episode, Call Me Your Baby. What I love about Star Wars first, when it comes to characters design and hair and makeup, is that it's so out there. We have things that are grungy, like pre-modern type stuff. We have a lot of like UGG based clothes, a lot of wraps. And then we have higher society, which goes from intricate Mongolian outfits like the Naboo or even cocktail dresses. With these characters, I didn't help write the characters, so they all have backstories. And I'm coming in as a character designer to make something in real life, take it off of paper. So I have to get the backstory from the writer or from the creator and try and incorporate that into something we can actually do with minimal funds, minimal prosthetics, hopefully, and minimal CGI. Because we want to be as practical as we can, like the original Star Wars series. So since we're doing Call Me Your Baby, Sansory already had a look. She had been filmed before once in the Proof of Concept. And now we're going in immediately into one of her spy outfits. So we had the vague idea of what we wanted. We wanted her to look like one of these courtesans, taking a lot again from the Jabba Twi'leks. But she isn't a slave girl. She is, she's not, she's a bounty hunter. So we had to incorporate what she would actually wear on a mission that would one hide her identity, still give her the range of movement and keep her comfortable. The makeup was such a challenge to come up with, specifically because I don't know much about Twi'leks. So we had to do a lot of research into what Twi'leks wore and then what was in canon about the courtesan Twi'lek. So we focused a lot on the two at Jabba's palace and I found it looked a lot like Tibetan traditional makeup, like traditional performance makeup. So that's where I went with it and uh, contrasting colors because she's violet. So it's and gosh, and that was the first time we were getting the mix ratio right too, because originally in the proof of concept, she's a much darker violet. But when she got her head tails remade, um, by an amazing, I don't, I think her name's Twi'lek Pam. She's amazing. The head tails are fantastic, but uh, they're much lighter than what it was. I think she added white paint into it. So then we had to mix the color. Originally it was light purple and the prime blue from EBA. And we ended up having to put white in. And getting that ratio was so difficult the first time. It was so hard. And we're like, I don't know, maybe this one. And we test a little bit. And I was like, is it? Changed lights. It was completely different color. And then we ran out of paint. <laughs> then we ran out of paint. So I had a one eyeshadow from like an old palette that I had that I just started brushing on her. I'm like, this is going to have to do. Uh, for Sansory, we, hate, we have her headpiece, uh, her headband, which will always be there. What we changed was the decoration. Uh, underneath the skirt she has her shorts which are her space shorts that's something that Sansri would wear all the time uh, she has one, she has a belt and later on she, you see that she has a lot of belt and in the back she has one of her knives so that's also something that's very Sansri because she wouldn't necessarily wear so much color she's more black grays color tone Sansri's outfit we had to buy and that was actually our second version of it because the first version was actually the bathing suit one piece thing that the courtesan's wearing that's the gold 
orange like tooth thingy. Natalie tried it on and it just did not look like what we wanted it to look like. The picture, because we ordered it online, did not look at all what it was supposed to be. So we're like, okay. So Sansory was mostly bought or made. Uh, the headpiece, which is a Sansory, like closet piece. Since Sansory, Sansory's always wearing her headpiece. Uh, she made, I made the, the communicator out of, oh, what is it made out of? Um, model magic and an old pendant that I had. So that beautiful jewel was an old jewelry piece that I was never going to use again. I did have to make the, the chain necklaces, which was easy. I just went to a home store and bought, I think it was 13 inches of chain, three sets. And we just clamped them together with one of those, uh, like hooks, like keychain hooks. And those worked really well. The first design we had of Nixus was much different than what we ended up with, mostly because the actor that we got envisioned a different Nixus. And then the prosthetic pieces that we were able to, to get wasn't something that was even talked about in the first designs. So at first he's like this slimy, like super intelligent, gross thing come from the middle of nowhere in the depths of space. And then he ended up as this hulking beast of a monster. And it worked out because the pieces that we did, I think they're originally, I think the pieces were originally supposed to be just a couple of horns that went around the face and we ended up putting them on the cheeks, up on the forehead, on the chin. So we were, we were able to cut them. The actor for Nixus is bald and we wanted something not bald. So I ended up getting a lot of crepe wool that I had left over and braiding this like little tail. You do have to roll with the bunches, I guess, with what you can use what the character is in essence. Did it hurt to have him go from this more, I guess, first order look to this beast? I don't think so. I think it worked, especially with how the story progresses. Um, but other things we have to keep in con, uh, we have to think about continuity and how they're gonna act later on. Um, I'll talk about the droids because originally we wanted actual robots, but that didn't happen. They're being mind controlled and you can tell one of them has been there longer because of how deep the implant has progressed through, which was really fun because I got to do that. Um, so we I had some old wires and old, um, they're like the little plastic things that you put on the bottom of like furniture to slide them really small ones so I latex them to their head and put the wire in and latexed out the scarring and then they had like seven wires going back and they had to be taped safely to the back of their neck because in the fight scene they ripped them out they had to be ripped out without being ripped off of them <laughs> and that was fun but then to get the more robot look and not more we are a human with a wire coming out of my forehead. I use this thing called gaff quat, which uh, is the sticky bit in hairspray. And I think you've seen it now. It's, it looks like pure honey and it dries completely hard. We use it on sansory and we I've used it on those two poor extras heads completely. We did like the super hard straight part and they just went for it with um with some sticks with um some popsicle sticks and i was like yep yeah, it'll dry <laughs> My name is Paulina. I'm a makeup and effects artist based in Los Angeles, California. I've been doing this for about four years in LA and I hope you all do some great sci-fi makeups.